Well, I got a chance to, to read the book last night, and uh, I have to say it's a, it's a funny book, as well as been a very interesting book. Do you think it reflects your personality a bit more? Uh, well, I hope so, and I, I think there is, it is a little bit upbeat. Obviously, with the, getting a leak on Monday didn't help because people were picking up a few snippets and looking at the disagreements I had with people. But yeah, I'm happy with the book. I enjoyed working with Roddy. I think he's done a brilliant job, yeah. What, what did he bring to the table? I found him quite relaxing and easy to work with. Obviously, obviously over the years, any time I've done interviews, it's been with sports journalists, and that can get a bit tiring, I suppose. Um, so the, the fact that work with Roddy, uh, I found really interesting. That, that was one of the reasons I'd done the book. I had no major plans to do anything, but when I got the offer and I met Roddy, I thought, you know what, I wasn't obviously working at the time. I thought, uh, you know, I'll go for it. Obviously, because of the leak, um, there's been huge publicity, and as you say, the headlines were the usual cartoon yeah. Roy Keane, Roy rants, Roy fumes, Roy rages. Do you get sick of that portrayal of you? Yeah, I think so. But uh, listen, if you look over the years with, with the sending offs and I suppose the disagreements I had with people, it's, you know, it's, I'm, I suppose I'm not surprised with it. Obviously, it can be people being very lazy, lazy, a lot of lazy journalists out there, you know, um, and, and they're like easy headlines. Um, but that's, that, that's part of the game, you know, it's just, just one big game, isn't it? Do you think you you were settling old scores with this book? Um, uh, maybe, maybe. I, I, I didn't. That wasn't my intention. You have to look at ask Roddy for that because the way Roddy wrote it was just quite relaxing, and I think he was getting little bits out of me at the time. And um, and even when I was meeting Roddy, I mightn't have been in a good space or in the mood for it, you know. But Roddy had a good way of just relaxing me, and uh, yeah, he's quite clever. So settling old scores, I wouldn't say that. I, I felt. Ah, to, you have to get your defence in there because over the last few years, I think people have said a lot of things about me, a lot of lies. I thought enough's enough. What about Slags Ferguson? Because when his book came out, you were you were quite critical of him. Yeah, yeah, but only in the sense that obviously I had my disagreement when I left the club, but then obviously you, you try and move on. But w when he starts bringing up stuff about myself and and maybe other ex-teammates and, and being critical of us, I found it. I just found it. Uh, crazy that a manager who's had success with the players including myself and other lads who've earned him millions of pounds lots of trophies uh, statues after him and you know and all of a sudden he's sitting back and everyone says you know we have to accept it well, why? why why should we accept somebody talking nonsense like that so I thought enough's enough I obviously kept quiet at the time again as you said you, you have to kind of it's like in a football game, you have to bide your time and just wait for the right moment. You say a lot of people have left United on, on bad terms, not just yourself, yeah, perhaps, plenty. but Beckham, Yapstam, a few others. And Mistelroy, mm -hmm. plenty of them. I think if you privately ask Brian Robson and Steve Bruce, I think I'd be interested to see what they have to say, the way they left. So maybe it can't all be the players, you know, it can't all be the players leaving on bad terms, or it can't be always their fault. So maybe Ferguson should have a look at himself as well. People talk about his man management. I'm not so sure about that. He's in Dublin tonight, and he was a huge part of your career and, and uh, a huge part of your life for such a long time. Do you think you'll ever come to terms with that and, and, and build bridges? No, it doesn't keep me awake at night. I think you have uh, disagreements with people. Football's a small world, so I'm guessing we probably will cross paths somewhere along the, the line, and, and we'll see what happens then. But, yeah, there's obviously disappointing when you work with people for a long time, yet they, can, they start going off and start slagging you off. So, you know, he started it. <laughs> <laughs> you said that uh, the leaving of Manchester United was a kind of a deja vu, was you, your word, Saipan Mark yeah, too? Yeah, it seemed to be, yeah. Well, it did when we were having a meeting with, again, you'd think would be a private team meeting, that people could air their views, and I usually suffer the consequences when there is one, obviously Saipan, and yeah, so that was, uh, that's the way I felt when I left, uh, left United, you know, when you're talking to players and everyone else is okay with it, but the manager has issues probably gone back over the years and all of a sudden you're going and, and, and I've said in the book I, I know that when I get in these disagreements or certainly when I'm backed into a corner I, I'm obviously going to suffer I'm going to lose my job over it but mm. you did say that um, on reflection Saipan ultimately you, you, you lost that one and yet well, I, I have to say to you the inside cover of the book says that your incident with Mick McCarthy resulted in your walkout from the 20, 2002 World Cup now I was there. I know a lot of people vigorously defended you because Mick McCarthy said that he sent you home. Yeah. No. No. Um, Which is it? No. I, I said to Mick in the in the argument that um, let me get my facts right here. That um, yeah, I didn't I didn't respect him. I said, well, if, if you if you don't respect me, how can you play for me? And I said, yeah, all right, well, I won't play for you. 
So that, that was it. No, no. And you Listen, think... Yeah, no, no, nobody sends me anywhere. Again, even, even now people talk about making me character Alex Ferguson. You know, you, whatever career you're in, or a profession like you're in, you, know, you, you answer to no man. 43 years of age, you're five children. Do you think I have to you bide up, bow down to these people? But no. No, I, I regret the incidents. Of course I did. I didn't go off to the World Cup hoping it was going to kick off between everybody. And I didn't go to United that day thinking, oh, listen, you know, it's, let's have a big disagreement and, and I'll leave the club. That wasn't my intention when I'm going to work and I'm going to say pan, let me tell you. But things get thrown at you and you, you have to react. Mick McCarthy questioned me about injuries and all this. I'm saying I faked an injury. How oh, dare he? You know what I mean? Who, who are these people? Why should I listen to that nonsense? Why should I listen to Ferguson? Everyone's frightened to death of these people because they think they have power over you, control. Nonsense. Do you think it's, it's been healed now, that, that civil war there was almost in this country? Because I know it's a long time ago, but people but still that war, talk that, about that it. Worry me. I mean, that doesn't keep me awake at night. If, if you think I'm worried about what people think and say, well, side plan, I thought you were right or wrong. I, 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 do you think that was on my mind when I was disagreeing with somebody, when I'm standing in front of other players? And I've played for Ireland since I was 15 years, and if somebody stood there going, oh, you, you know, you faked an injury. How dare they? And you think I was going to go, well, I, won't, I wonder what you know, will people in Ireland think about this? You don't think that way. I was, I was doing what I thought was right. I wonder if people agreed with it or not. I thought, and if people know in the street think I was wrong about side plan, I'd take a run and jump. My, my life's not dictated by people who think I've made a right or the wrong decision. They're entitled to their opinions, of course they are. But don't be, don't be giving me all that nonsense. You were saying, though, that you, you felt your family, your, your family in Ireland, your, your, your kids in Manchester... They all suffered. Of course they suffered. Mm. Of course they suffered. I'm sick of hearing about other people suffering. I support the suffering. And what about the players? And make, uh, They moved on pretty quickly, let me tell you. And they weren't shy and plugging into interviews when they came back with their wife and kids. Ah, listen, I have a good memory. You're back with Ireland now and, and your connection with Martin O'Neill. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary, really, that you have Brian Clough in common, uh, Nottingham Forest, uh, Aston Villa, Celtic, Sunderland, and now the Republic of Ireland. And American football. And <laughs> our kids' names. No, that is. Well, that's the way. The, the way things have panned out have been brilliant for me, in a sense, you know, for, uh, keeps them from a selfish point of view, getting been out of the air for two and a bit years, which probably done me no harm. You know, even doing a few bits with the TV and, um, and some off-the-field stuff. But to, to come back and work with Mar and the other staff and the players, and because it obviously, did, I suppose, to come back over the you know the World Cup and the disappointments and, and the issues I suppose I had with the FBI, that was brilliant. You know, the, the man upstairs looked after me, and I, I'm enjoying it. I really am. It's given me. I'd probably lost a bit of love for the game because of the few disagreements I had with people. But to get back involved, brilliant. I'm looking forward to Saturday's game. It's going to be tough, but working with the players and uh, and not getting distracted by all the nonsense that can that can. That can affect you. Just focus on the game. Focus on the 11 v 11 and enjoy it. You uh, you mentioned when you were considering or you were hoping to get the assistant manager job that uh, you thought you might be under the radar a bit. <laughs> I find that funny. No, I it, is, say. No, it is. Well, it probably was a joke. With it. No, but in the sense of being, you know, not too much media stuff. But remember, I agreed, this book was agreed before I even got back involved in football. I, I'm not looking for more uh, hassle in my life. I was obviously doing the book before I got back involved in Ireland, but yeah, keep it under the radar in terms of you know being up more on a training pitch, not necessarily doing lots of media stuff because I, I appreciate Martin has to do more of that than I do. Um, but obviously, it'll be a hectic day today. But I know where my priorities are. That's to work with the players and to um, and to get ready for Saturday's game. And, and I, I did promise them all I'd bring a copy back tonight. So uh, <laughs> one for everyone in the audience. Me. Yeah, yeah, I know, I bought a few of them. You said though that assistant manager ultimately it might frustrate you. How long can you keep doing that with Ireland or with Aston? I don't, I don't know. I, I think I'm enjoying it. Again, it's a dangerous to look too far ahead. But I think ultimately I do, I do see myself getting back and obviously in, in, into the hot seat because part of me does miss that. You know, making them crunch decisions. Would it be? Undecided about a player who's going to play, the tactics, the travelling, days off. You know, obviously, I'd like to think Martin and, and Paul at Villa are, are taking my opinions on board, but I know deep down there that like, they're making the final decision and they get more money. Finally, Roy, <laughs> finally, you, you say in the book, yeah, you're always chasing contentment. How close to you to, uh, to contentment I mean, are you? Uh, I'm quite contented today, but you know, I might see you tomorrow. I tell you to take a run and jump. So it's uh, not. Nah. Yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite content with what I'm doing. As I said, I feel fortunate to be working with, with Ireland. I have to say, it's, it's been great working with the players and, uh, and just hopefully we can bring a bit of success now because that's what we're here for. It's, it's no good me sitting here going, oh, it's great, and they're going, 
listen, we're here to, we're here to get results and to qualify. And, um, and please God, we can do that.